today's Yahoo Finance Live, we got stocks opening up this morning a little bit higher, um, but not much of a recovery from yesterday's sell-off that was the steepest for the Dow going back to October for the S&P and the Nasdaq going back just a couple of months. Lori Calvacina is with us now, RBC Capital Markets Head of U.S. Equity Strategy. And first, Lori, it's great to see you. First, I would ask just kind of what you make about uh, of the last uh, day and a half, let's call it, uh, of action in the markets and whether this is the start of a bigger move or a bottom or how you're viewing it in context. Sure. It's great to see you too, Julie. Thanks for having me back. And, you know, look, I think what's interesting about the price action so far this morning, we'll see if it ends up, you know, holding. Um, but the market is up a little bit, right? But it's on the back of defensive sectors doing pretty well. So things like healthcare, REITs, utilities are right up there with financials and industrials in terms of recovering today. And, and you know, that's really what I've noticed is that over the last week or so, we've kind of moved from the secular growth um, leadership in the market to the classic defensive leadership in the market. And, you know, I think there have been a lot of things that have pummeled this market recently. A tighter Fed coming sooner than most people had initially anticipated, that befuddling drop in 10 year yields. But I think what the market has really woken up to over the last few days is the COVID risk that's still out there. And I think you can look, um, at, you know, right back to last week's earnings calls. Um, and management teams that came out with results were talking about this issue and highlighting the impact that this could still have on business going forward. And I think that was a, a little bit of a wake up call to the street, frankly. You write about one company you highlight in your latest note, Fastenal. Uh, they noted in their earnings call, nine and a half percent of their workforce uh, was impacted uh, or infected with COVID. I mean, that is a big change to their workforce in terms of uh, them as human beings, but how many people in fact come back to their business do you think the market just needs to adjust further for those realities facing a lot of companies, not just Fastenal? Well, I think that, you know, what, what struck me, right, it was a very heavy financials week last week, but we did have, you know, some industrial companies, some business services companies, some consumer staple companies. And I found that the COVID commentary was not just limited to the industrial sector, for example, that it was something you saw um, across the different sectors that did report. Um, and so, you know, I think the issue, right, is, and look, I want to be very clear, I'm not saying that we're not having a recovery. I'm not saying we're tipping back into a recession. But what it did for me was just remind me that COVID does inject a certain degree of uncertainty in the stock market outlook going forward, and perhaps some unevenness, some bumps um, along the road to recovery going forward, that it's not going to be all smooth sailing. It's not going to be as smooth as that flight we saw this morning. Um, and I think that, you know, we're, we're sitting at a point, right, where we've got extremely high valuations. Uh, we've got perhaps less accommodative monetary policy, you know, on the horizon. We can sort of see it in the distance now, right? And, you know, we take that in the context of positioning and sentiment that have been extremely euphoric. This is not a market that can really absorb bad news right now. And I think you got a little bit of a dose of that and you saw markets react appropriately. And, you know, Laura, you mentioned what's been happening um, with the 10 year, but I'm just curious, you know, maybe for a little bit more of your thoughts on just the way that treasuries have been impacting stocks uh, or, or haven't really, it kind of seems until the last handful of days. Well, you know, I, I think that I, I forget exactly when I put the piece out, but we had a, a, a note maybe about a month, six weeks ago or so, where we actually addressed what we thought might be going on with the 10-year Treasury yield. We, we explored the idea it might be a peak in the ISM, which did not turn out to be the case. Um, but, you know, it just goes to show you that I've been getting questions about this issue from equity investors for quite some time. Now, the fact that markets haven't really reacted in a massive way to it until recently um, doesn't tell you that investors weren't thinking about it. And I think it was just something, frankly, you know, it was one investor I talked to, they said, you know, it, it, I, I worry it's telling me something and I don't know what that is yet, but I worry it's sending a negative signal. And I think it's just sort of that uncertainty associated with the move and the fact that, you know, I, I don't think the fixed income community has done a great job of explaining exactly why that has, has, has occurred. And that uncertainty, I think, has weighed on investors more than anything else. And, you know, obviously you're you're an equity strategist, Lori, but do you have a target for how low you think the 10 year could go? And do you think that, you know, as you said, until recently, it hasn't really affected equities as much. Even yesterday, yes, it was a big drop, but we've certainly seen bigger. Does does the 10 year yield go lower and does it continue to be a problem for stocks? 
Well, you know, look, I don't make a call on the 10 year yield, but I will tell you at the end of June, we did an investor survey. It's something we do every quarter and it's of equity focused investors, mostly portfolio managers and macro types like me. And they generally thought in the survey that the 10 year yield was going to go up into the two to 3% range sometime over the next six to 12 months. So this downward move has really caught the equity community by surprise. You know, when I think about sort of downside in markets, our call has been that we would see a bit of a pullback in the second half of the year. If you go back and look at when we have peaks rate of change in earnings growth coming out of recessions, two of the last three times that's happened, two of the last three cycles, we've seen a drop of about eight to 9% peak to trough in the S&P 500. And that's still my base case for how far stocks need to go down before you can really pull some of this froth, some of this recovery froth out of the market. If we have a full fledged growth scare, and I'm not of the opinion that that's what we're having yet, um, but that would take you more into sort of the mid teens, you know, 20% type downside. And to be clear, that's not what I'm looking for. But if this were to turn into something more nefarious, that's, you know, what growth scares usually end up amounting to is somewhere in that kind of mid to high teens. Lori, one read yesterday, at least for me, from the market's move, they're concerned about the economic recovery because of the COVID Delta variant. I mean, do you think this is the type of event uh, people are now having to wear more masks indoors, for example? Does that derail the economic recovery in the U.S.? So, you know, if you look at TSA flying data, for example, it's been quite strong. If you look at the open table data, you know, that's continued to be quite strong. I think that, you know, what investors are struggling with is we, we all sort of know, right, that the pace of GDP growth is set to slow, right, that these sort of unbelievable growth rates that we've seen we're, we're going to slow anyway. The question now I think investors are grappling with is just how much, um, how much does it come down? Um, and I think, again, I think we've got a market that's that's pretty well exhausted. You know, just in terms of the ferocious run that we've had, we have a lot of things that are looking stretched. So even just kind of pulling down that expectation a little bit more than than had already been in place. You know, I, I just think the conditions are there to do some damage to this market in the short term. Uh, you know, Laurie, in a, in a different um, time, we would have only talked about this. So we'll get you out of here on it. Um, crypto right now, kind of in the background, not not talking about it a whole lot. Not, doesn't seem as much. Are you still getting questions on it uh, from your clients or has, has that chatter maybe maybe quieted down a bit? You know, to be fair, um, I don't cover crypto, so most investors I speak with don't don't give me those questions to begin with. Um, and we've frankly had our hands full with the reflation trade breaking down um, and the 10 year yield. Um, so crypto, honestly, just hasn't been coming up a lot in my conversations recently. But again, it's not what I cover. So lucky you. <laughs> All right, Lori Alvazina. <laughs> Good to see you. RBC Capital Markets, head of U.S. equity you strategy. Good to see you. Take